Hello and welcome to the Tavern Chat Podcast. I'm your host, Eric Tenkar, your bartender in the OSR, your main proprietor at Tenkar's Tavern Blog, Discord server, media group, Facebook group, Twittering, Instagram, and YouTube.com backward slash Eric Tenkar. That's E R I K T E N K A R. It's where I do some extra videos, like where I did the review of the dollar dice that are uh, available via Dollar Tree. It's where myself and Bad Mike from North Texas RPG Con do our weekly talking crit, which you can listen to right here on this podcast. But if you want to participate in the live stream, well, YouTube is where it's at. Uh, to the lawyer and myself, we're going to be doing a twice monthly uh, live stream on Friday nights. So, YouTube is where to be at. Oh, and it's official. Uh, Talking Crit will be doing a series of live streams uh, for the Total Con in February. So, that means we're going to do Wednesday night and Thursday night and Friday night and Saturday night. We should have live guests for each of those. So, if you want to pretend that you're at a con in the midst of the pandemic... Our aim is to uh, get you there. Maybe um, I'll get some bar sound as a background noise going. Maybe that would be good, right? You never know. I might be able to pull that shit off. So, folks, what are we going to talk about today? Well, I-, I was going through my books. And when I say my books, my gaming books. And literally right before I, I did the podcast, because this wasn't what I was, I was thinking about, but... I saw the Munster Manual. That's the 1E Munster Manual. Now, my Munster Manual uh, was one of the books that got stored in the basement here. And the uh, front of the basement, which would periodically flood, and then it got very humid. And so my Munster Manual, my original Munster Manual, the one that I played with in the 80s, uh, got... Slimed some gray mold slime on the cut. It was, it was over. It was done. Now I had bought out the only time I ever bought something from on Craigslist. I had bought out somebody's uh, game collection. It's AD and D one E game collection. I paid, I don't know, one hundred and fifty, two hundred bucks. This is about I don't know, five six years ago, and. Uh, he had a pretty good quality uh, Munster Manual, one of the fourth edition, fourth printing. It's got the uh, red leaves in the front and back, which I had never seen before. Uh, but it it got me thinking. The, of the creatures that you could include in the Munster Manual, and there are some great ones, right? You got the dragons. You got doppelgangers, uh, you got some dinosaurs, you got bugbears, and I look at stuff like that, and then I go, why why the fuck is there a giant gar? Okay, why? All right, so it almost looks like it's a legless crocodile. Me, You're not going to put it in a dungeon, right? And you're not going to, I mean... Yes, I know there were some uh, adventures to have your players in the water, but uh, that always inclu- needed, you know, magic items to allow them to breathe underwater. And the rules for underwater adventures really didn't come into play until the Manchester Manual, sorry, so the DM's Guide, which came out uh, last of the three chords. This is the first one. Portuguese Man of War. <sighs> Why? I mean, there are some great creatures in here, um, and then there are some that really make me scratch my head. But I do like the way the demi-humans and the humanoids are described as more than just generic. They tell you how the goblins are generally armed. Right, so it's not you know, sword, short sword and military pike, short sword and sling, 
Short sword and spear. Sling. I'm guessing with just a sling. They must have a dagger, too. Uh, military. Uh, Morningstar, military, pike, spear. Leaders and guards will typically have the best weapons, bearing two of each. Uh, goblins are fair miners, and they are able to note new or unusual construction 25% of the time. So, when you look at this, and you say, hmm, goblins, intelligence, average, right? With a notation that it's low, so I guess it's a low range of average. But dwarves are very intelligent. And you wouldn't think that they'd be more intelligent than other creatures. Elves are highly intelligent, which I'm guessing is not looking at a reference right now. Oh, wait, so it wasn't dwarf. What was I looking at before then? Oh, gnomes are very intelligent. My bad. Dwarves are also very intelligent. And we're told how they are armed. And you know what? Only 45% of the time are they armed with axes. 40% of the time it's with a sword as the main weapon. Go figure that out. So a lot of thought went into how to make encounters using this book unique. And I, I think that it's interesting. In the section on dinosaurs, you could have done a whole... Oh, lost, when I say Lost Lands, I'm not talking Frog God Lost Lands, but a whole lo Lost Land Island type of deal just with dinosaurs and stuff. And uh, I, I do like, because these are rules that I, I swear to God, I knew they existed, but never really referred to them in the middle of an adventure, so I, I guess I knew it, but I didn't care. Devils are affected by the list of attack forms as indicated. Acid. Maximum damage will be full. Cold. Half. Electricity. Full. Fire. Dragon. Magical. None. Gas. Poisonous. Half. Iron weapons. None. Unless they're affected by normal weapons, in which case they will be affected according to the weapon type. Magic missile, full. Poison, full. Silver weapon, full. And yes, when it comes to the devils and the demons, they they give you named ones, right? They 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 take Asmodeus, they take Beazabal, uh, and others, and they make them into these big bad guys that you are supposed to defeat, right? And it's just like Deities and Demigods became. I mean, the joke is, all right, like Orcus. Well, why can't your high-level party defeat him? He's only AC negative 6. He's only 120 hit points, right? Match resistance is only 85%. You get, I don't know, 15 fellow characters, he should theoretically be in trouble. Of course, he has psionic ability, and we all know that that means trouble because nobody could fucking understand all that shit. At least I couldn't. And I, I've spoken about, about that in the past. But... I really feel, to a large extent, that the Munster Manual is a book that we underutilized and overutilized. Remember, I never had one initially. I had a DMG and a, a player's handbook. And now, we don't know about you, but we had a rule at the table. And the rule at the table was you cannot use information from the Munster Manual that your characters would not know. So you couldn't go through and, well, you, you did, right? You went through and you memorized all this shit back then. So you knew exactly what the weaknesses were for fucking everything. This book, it's from the back cover, by the way. This book provides a complete alphabetical listing of all monsters encountered in the various works 
which comprise the Advanced Dungeons and Dragons game system. Uh, this was the first book for it. So I don't know how it had them. I guess it was the only monster book at the time. It is an invaluable aid to players and dungeon masters alike. If you were a player and you brought this to my game session, you were in for a world of fucking hurt. Because that was as bad as being accused of fudging your dice rolls. All right? Using knowledge as a player that your character would not have. That was big. That was big. Folks, we are in the midst of the pandemic. So aside from using your common sense, it also means that many of us are not getting in the uh, usual physical activities that would occupy our life. I'm not going to make this an episode of Gamer's Health. Improvise. Throw a little physical activity in. I know it's getting cold. Going out might not be the, the big thing there for you. Uh, early in the week, I'm going to be getting a Nintendo Switch, so we'll see uh, how I can hack that into getting some physical activity in. Um, aside from that, be safe, be well. God bless. Roll those dice. Um, what's the other one? Roll those dice. Be well. Eh, you know what? I'm going to do the live long and prosper. Seriously. Do what you can. All right. Everybody, the new year is coming up. And I don't ever make public uh, New Year's resolutions, but I probably will this year. And uh, I'd like you all to think what you'd like to make as your resolution for 2021, aside from surviving the uh, the world of the pandemic. Um Think about how you want to improve your health. And that doesn't just mean physical. It could be emotional. It could be spiritual. Um, it could be mental. But think about it. you got a couple of weeks. I'm going to be hitting you up on this. Rach and I might be giving you a quiz. But it's something to think about. All right, folks. On that note, God willing, I will talk with you and see you all. Well. All right, talk with you all tomorrow. Later.